All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to cut out the perfect size speaker hole and take it one step further, separate it from the crowd, and also flush mount the speaker with the face of the timber. This will give you an off the shelf look, make the speakers look tons more professional and really, really step up your speaker building game. So stick around, because that's what I'm gonna be doing in today's video. So what I'll be using in today's video is this Makita router. It can be any sort of router, it doesn't matter. A Jasper circle jig can be bought at Parts Express, and I'll link everything I'm using in today's video in the video description so you can go and pick it up for yourself and as well as that we're obviously going to need some sort of speaker driver I've chosen a classic series 5 inch woofer because I just have one laying around so let's go into a little bit more detail of how we're going to be doing it in today's video now if you've seen one two three toys video on how to do this well, he used a rebate bit on a router table and I personally don't have a router table. So I was thinking of an alternative way to do it. And I figured I can actually do it with the circle jig that I have just here. It's just gonna take a little bit more time and a little bit more trial and error to get it right. But let's quickly explain what I mean by using the circle jig to flush mount these speakers perfectly. So if we have a look at the back of the speaker, we can tell that there is an overall dimension of the speaker, which would be from here to over here on the speaker. This is listed on Parts Express's website. And I love using Parts Express's drivers because they use and list all of these dimensions on their website. So you don't have to measure them yourself and accidentally get it wrong. And then there is obviously the cutout dimensions of the speaker, which is the dimensions that go through the entire way of the wood, which would be from here to here of the speaker. And that's what you actually wanna be cutting right through the timber. But if we wanna actually just recess the speaker, we wanna figure out the thickness of this mounting baffle just here, which on this particular driver is about three and a half millimeters. So what we're gonna do is set that depth on the router. So now we can see I've got the circle jig on the router and we're sitting at approximately three and a half millimeters for the depth of that bit, which is going to allow us to perfectly flush mount the speaker. Then what we'll do is measure across the entire face of the speaker driver and compare it with that of what's on Parts Express's website. So the speaker is measuring at a little over 5.3 inches. And if we have a look on Parts Express's website, it lists up here that it is 5.31. So we know that we have the perfect overall dimensions of the woofer. So what that means is we'll chuck 5.31 inches into an online calculator. And then once we convert that, we get five and five sixteenths of an inch. So let's go and set that up on the router jig. So this jig is very, very easy to set. We just said five inches and five sixteenths. So we come all the way down here to five inches, which is just here. And then we come up here to five sixteenths and bang, we just slide this little thing in and then we drill our hole in the timber where we want the center of the speaker hole that slots into the hole and then we get the perfect cutout. It's so simple, so easy, and that's why I absolutely love using the circle jig from Jasper to cut out speaker holes. So let's quickly show you what I mean now on the MDF. All right, so I've just drilled a hole in the MDF and just put the jig in, as we can see just there. This is completely just in a random location. I'm just doing this purely for the video on this piece of test MDF right here. So what I'm gonna do is go outside. Don't forget to wear dust protection because this MDF dust is actually very bad for your health to breathe in. So use some sort of dust mask. I'd also advise hearing protection and probably eye protection as well. Look after yourself, uh, definitely when you're cutting MDF, it's not very good to breathe in or to have in your eyes and this router gets very loud. So I'm gonna go outside now and uh, simply just put that in. Again, the bit set to three mil. So I know I'm gonna get the perfect uh, depth for the cut. So we'll just do a test pass. We'll go all the way around and we'll see how that looks. And there we are with the first pass. And if we do a quick test fit, we can actually see that the hole is slightly too small for the woofer. So we're gonna step it up one size and do it again. Now that we've cut out the edge here for the edge of the woofer, we're gonna jump back on the Parts Express website and then figure out the dimensions of the actual cutout for the woofer. So I need four and seven sixteenths of an inch. I've now got that set on the jig. So let's plunge cut this all the way through the MDF. And there we are, after a fair amount of time, let's quickly test fit the woofer and see how well it fits. Ow. 
absolutely perfect. You can see right here on the edge that there is absolutely no lip. This is absolutely perfectly mounted and this is how I'll be doing all of my future speakers. So there we are after a little bit of trial and error and trying something that I've never seen done before. I successfully rebated the perfect slot for the Dayton Audio Woofer. Let's just quickly stick this in the hole. That's what she said and we'll see how well this thing fits. Absolutely perfect right there. There's a tiny little bit that the woofer's sticking out due to the actual MDF going fluffy. Once the screws in that, this woofer will literally sit absolutely perfectly. So that's another thing that I'm gonna be doing in all my future builds to step up the quality of them significantly. It just looks 10 times better and more professional, but I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have, don't forget to chuck a like on it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I'll be uploading more videos where I give off tips like this and showing different ways to do things that maybe perhaps you never thought of. But with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it and I'll catch you in the next one.